Mike Bradley here, hope you're doing well as always. So, Jerome, or on YouTube, Ill the Pill, uh, a friend of mine on here for YouTube, uh, he has asked me about this lesson for a long time. And basically, this little guitar lesson I'm going to give you today is just knowing the neck. And I call it kind of like the matrix system. Okay, so if I'm in the key of D, I can see everywhere. I can, like if I look down at the guitar neck like this, I can see everywhere I can play in the key of D. So if you've seen that film, The, the Matrix, and he's looking at the computer and he's got all the green kind of da -da -da, no, little lines coming down, um, but they're seeing the real world with The Matrix, okay? Uh, and that's what I, I kind of think of it like here, you know, I'm seeing blah, 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 all these Ds kind of come up, all right? <laughs> so if you haven't seen the film, The Matrix, go and watch it. But I can't remember what, video it was. Uh, Jerome, please let me know in the comment section below. I think it was uh, how to be a good guitar player or tips on being a good guitar player. I can't quite remember now. Um, but I kind of mentioned about this matrix system and he's picked up on it. So I thought I'd do a video for you all about this in knowing the neck on this piece of tree. Now, one thing I should say, this relies heavily on the cage system. Okay, using the C shape, A, G, E, and D shapes, all right? The, the open chord shapes and then moving them into uh, bar chords, one key. All right, so um, if you don't know about that, uh, if you go to my website now, mikebradleymusic.com, uh, I've got a really cool lesson on the cage system on that, on my site and uh, I recommend you check that out if you don't know about the cage system. Uh, I've had some lovely feedback from people who have got that lesson, so I'm really glad that you've liked it and I've helped you, and thank you for support. So I, I advise you really to know your cage system. So, let's say I'm in the key of A, okay? Now, if I start playing, round that chord shape of A, I see, shape one pentatonic, okay, going on. So if I'm playing here, and I want to shimmy into shape two, okay, so even something like that, and then I can just play the top two strings on that fifth fret. Okay, let me just come in for a bit more of a close up here so you can see what I'm talking about. So, like I was saying, there's my shape, no, there's my A chord shape in shape one. So if I slide in there, I'm playing those two. Now I see, fair enough the fingering might be strange, but I see that chord around there, okay? I could throw my thumb on, I could do an open string like so. Now also the notes in an A major scale are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp and G sharp, all right? So, if I'm now here, if you think shape two, or the pentatonic, okay? Now there's an A, but there's a G sharp there. So this is how now I can get out of being in just pentatonics. So, something like that, all right? So where I'm on that A, I'm seeing G sharp is just next to A, right? You can look at it as G sharp, A flat. I don't think of it like A flat, but uh, enharmonically it would be A flat. So now I slid back to that G sharp there. Everything else was pentatonic. E, C sharp, B, A. Look at it, it's coming from the A major pentatonic scale. Also, A major scale as well, because the pentatonic is just five notes from the major scale. So, by going to that G sharp, it gives it that kind of melodic kind of feel, getting away from just your standard pentatonic stuff, you know? So, like I say, so I'm seeing, a, basically, I'm seeing an A chord here, and I'm seeing an A chord here. And then I'm seeing the note around this A chord. So round this e sh uh, the E shape for the A major chord, I've got pentatonic. But also as well, obviously I've got my major scale as well. So A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. 
So there is my G sharp, but also I've got a G sharp there, just like I've got a C sharp there and F sharp there. So that's a bit more jazz sounding <laughs> there, isn't it, you know? So there's my A. Now, something like here, and you can look at these two things. You can either look at this A chord using the D shape, or you can look at it using the C shape there for an A major chord. Now, either way you look at it, there I'm seeing my A major pentatonic scale, shape four. So where I've got this C shape, I'm seeing every single note of that pentatonic shape four around this C shape here. Oh, I'm gonna obviously six string as well if I want it, but my first string gonna come off there, all right? So, I don't know, so I've got here. But there, play the A, slide 9 to 11, 9 on the 3rd string, 10 on the 2nd string. So that can, kind of using chords as a, as a scale, as in a solo there, you know what I mean? I'm letting them all ring out there. So, knowing your notes and knowing your chords are so, so important. But if you know one, the other should come a lot easier. So if you know where your chords are, if you know, if you can play every single position where you can play an A chord, so an A here, 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 an A here. You know, so the notes in A is A, C sharp and E. So wherever you can see an A, C, C sharp and an E, you've got an A major chord. So that, for example, you know, again, round our pentatonic scale. But what's saying you can't use that as, no, as a solo, as a lead kind of playing? So that just went down. this so or you can play it in chords you know what I mean so uh, it's uh, like a pen knife like a Swiss army knife it does both things many many things so this little idea here is if I've got an open A string I like doing that if you're a regular viewer to my videos you would have seen me do this and no it might not be in the key of A but that idea now I just did a mistake there, but it wasn't a mistake, right? I, I didn't mean to play that G sharp. But, I made it work because I finished on a root note. But also, G sharp is still in A. So just by knowing those notes in the sc scale we're in, and then seeing your chords, you can then, that's how we're getting out of our pentatonic scales, you know, by adding in the other notes. A lot of people always say, I've been playing guitar for you know a few years now, X amount of years, but I can't get out of just playing pentatonics. First of all, there's nothing wrong with just playing pentatonics. Ask Carlos Santana to an extent, Eric Clapton, Steve Ray Vaughan played pretty much just pentatonics, you know. Um, even Joe Satriani and Steve I play a lot of pentatonic. It's still modal, but the notes they're using are still, you know, they do a lot of, you know, a lot of bent notes. <laughs> pentatonics you know so there's nothing wrong with pentatonics um, and then these other notes I'd literally just round it so like I was saying here you know so I did in this G sharp so where I am here and so okay where is a G sharp well, obviously there's one here a bit low there's one there so if I wanted to I don't know uh, 
you've got that. But of course also, there's a G sharp right there, which is a bit nearer. So if I've got... So I had that. Good little kind of da, 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 kind of ending instead of Hopefully this is kind of making sense and giving you some ideas here, you know, let's just change key a minute. Say I want to play in E. So I purposely just did that lick there for you, right, so you can see it. There's my E. I've started here. And then um, you can again look at it as going there or going there, you know? And because we know that G sharp before, it's the same shape. So in this case though, it's uh, a D sharp because the notes in uh, E major scale, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, so no, there I'm just going down the scale between the different positions. If I'm in shape four, there's shape five. I'm in shape one again. playing Gibsons too much lately so when I go back to Fenders because of the scowl length my notation's a bit out today I do apologise so like I say when I'm playing in shape one obviously here I've got this triad for E so I know that that chord shape is just round there you know but in shape 4, that D shape, no matter what key I'm in, if I'm in shape 4, that chord shape, if I'm doing the relative major or minor, doesn't matter, that chord shape will always be there. And it's got all those notes are in our pentatonic, alright? So in this case, B, E and G sharp, if I play shape 4, they're all in pentatonic. So if I want to be more melodic, I can play this A here, which isn't in shape 4. So relative to uh, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's the fourth note in there, the A note. So there I can, you know, as I go up it, as I go up it there, I can then spell out the chord as well back down. So I really hope this has given you some ideas here in just thinking maybe a bit differently to how you have been. Um, you know, we're still, I suppose, looking at it as boxes, but just trying to think as, basically think of the scale, uh, as the neck as one scale, you know? So you can practice kind of playing, you know, if we're in the key of A here, and E major as well, that you can work out what works and what doesn't. That gives it more of an Eastern flavour. Which would now be Lydian, but don't worry about that. But try that idea on all the strings. So, 
like I say, knowing your chords, knowing your scales, <laughs> basically the main ingredients playing guitar, but by getting one down, the other will be a bit a lot easier. Personally, I would recommend knowing all your chords, you know, knowing your, your main chord shape so that you can play an E everywhere on the guitar. You know, you don't, you're not lost when you need to play an E chord. All right, E, the notes in there, E, B, and G sharp. So I was thinking, okay, well there's an E, there's a B, there's a G sharp. There's that shape there, you know, uh, which we already know. But uh, let's try another one. So say you go, oh, da, 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 E, and then, well this is easy actually, isn't it? E. Or you could look at it as E, put the B on top, you know, change it back. So then you got a lick. Put a bit of gain on. Mishmashing them all together, all right? So I've rambled on a lot, hopefully that's helped. Like I say, it's really important you know your cage system, then this stuff will make even more sense. So do check out my site. And uh, everyone thank Ill The Pill, Jerome, for uh, this suggestion about, probably about a year ago. <laughs> anyway, hope you're all really, really well. Thank you all for the support, and I love you all very much. Take care without sounding gay. Mike Bradley signing out. And yes, actually, before I go, this is a Norman's Rare Guitars t-shirt. Um, do keep an eye on my LA vlogs. Part one went up last week, so uh, LA was fun. Anyway, now I'm saying goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>